When Kona was overran on January 10th, France had no forces in Mali. But as a former colonial power in the region, it remained persistently engaged throughout West Africa. All right, y'all, welcome back to Common Arms Channel. Okay, so today we're checking out a really, really big recommendation that I was getting from a lot of y'all, especially down in the Discord. So we've checked out videos on the channel about the French military and more specifically stuff that they did in Mali. Now, this video, I guess, is going to summarize the operation. So I guess it was called Op Serval or Operation Serval. So this is titled How French Fought a Lightning War in Mali. And this is by Battle Order. They do some really good stuff. So I'm excited to see what we can get as far as maybe some background information for the operation or just more specifics about some of the operations that they did. Because I've seen some videos on the channel, but mostly it was stuff outside of the reaction videos about the French doing operations in Mali. And it seems like it got pretty hot and heavy for them, but it also seems like they were putting in some pretty solid work. So hopefully this video gives us a little bit more information. So let's check it out. Al-Qaeda linked Islamist rebels in Mali have promised to drag France into an Afghanistan style war. They've launched a mm. counter-offensive after four days of French airstrikes on their northern strongholds. Four it's days January of airstrikes. 2013 and a war has returned to Mali. Mm. Conflict is nothing new to this West African country. In the aftermath of the 2012 Tuareg Rebellion, Mali was split mm. in two, with a dense, fertile south under the recently couped central government, and okay. the arid, sparsely populated north under the control of three main rebel groups. Okay, so again, I'm learning a whole lot about this in general. First of all, Mali looks a lot bigger than I would have expected, but I don't really know a whole lot about Mali, so it's nice getting some background information you know, of how this actually came into becoming a conflict. So it looks like there are splits, and this is 2012, so this is pretty recent. I mean, 10 years ago. Man, it's 10 years ago. Yeah, so it was 10 years ago, but that's still a lot more recent when, it, you know, you're talking about actual conflict, especially considering the global war on terror was, you know, over 10 years longer than that. One of these groups is the National Movement for the Liberation of Azawad, or the MNLA, which is a secular Tuareg organization that seeks the independence of the largely Arab Berber North Mali from the sub-Saharan central okay. government in the south. However, while Tuareg autonomy sparked the North's secession, the MNLA has been pushed to the periphery, as secession has been hijacked by Islamist extremist groups. The most prominent yeah, is Ansar Dean, which seeks not the North's independence, but the enforcement of Sharia law in all of Mali. Aligned hmm. with them is Mujao. It's always interesting to actually see like an AK on the flag. I'm not sure if you can really draw some, you know, assumptions or comparisons with that, but it's kind of crazy. It's like the AK has really, really transcended into something, almost like an image that people are actually putting it on their flags. So it looks like there's actually a couple of Islamic extremist groups in Mali, at least in North Mali. So yeah, I'm sure that definitely doesn't help when they're fighting against each other as well. ...around the city of Gao. They draw support from Al-Qaeda, who tie Mali into the broader Islamist insurgency plaguing the Maghreb and Sahel regions of sense, North yeah. Africa. This was the state of Mali through late 2012. However, after the Malian government rejected Ansar Dean's most recent demand to integrate Sharia into its constitution, the conflict reignited. Hmm. On January 7th, over 1,000 Islamist fighters mass in the vicinity of Bore, motorized by up to 300 pickup trucks. Islamists Damn, are closing in on the town of Kona, straddling the Niger River. They approach from Duensa to the east and Coriense to the north, while another element heads south to cut off the Malians' route of retreat okay. back towards Sivari. So it's like a full-on offensive. Using pickups supported by heavy weapons, the militants move fast and place themselves within Kona by 10 a.m. With incomplete information, indecisiveness from the central government, and a poor supply situation, hmm. the Malians withdraw from the city at 11 a.m. This puts the Malians in a dire situation. If left unabated, the capture of Mopti is assured. And if they take the river crossing in Mopti, Mali's capital is only a two days drive away. The Malians need Damn, help, that's happening the pretty French are quick. the first to answer the call. When Kona was overran on January 10th, France had no forces in Mali. 
But as a former okay. colonial power in the region, it remained persistently engaged throughout West Africa. Okay, that makes sense. When President Francois Hollande announces France will intervene on the 11th, elements of the 4th Special Forces Helicopter Regiment equipped with cannon and missile armed gazelles Damn. are immediately rerouted from counterterrorism operations in the neighboring Burkina Faso. Within hmm. two hours of taking flight, two gazelles engage Islamist convoys Damn. heading south from Kona. Right Straking into it. at low altitude, at least one militant pickup is destroyed. But with no support, the gazelles take heavy fire, killing one helicopter's co-pilot and forcing the other one down near Sibari. It's Damn, not until shitty. a second flight of gazelles arrives that the militant advance is halted and turned back to Kona. Hmm. Strike jets deployed to the region also become involved, targeting rebel Damn, positions. Damn, it's happening really However, quick. However, it's clear that air support alone will not accomplish France's main objective, help Mali take back its northern territories. The force that France brings to bear will be shaped by the situation. The hmm. French will ultimately be limited by their air and sea lift capacity and lean on its allies for heavier air transport. The force needs to deploy quickly and on short notice to meet the present threat. Be flexible enough yeah, to no operate kidding. in a high- So I'm not too savvy on like African conflicts or whatnot because I mean it is a pretty massive continent and there's always a lot going on. But it seems like this happened really, really quickly. So I kind of wonder what the Mali army was or how they were sort of responding when all this started to go down or if they were even like i'm not even sure if they have like any sort of you know proper intelligence to be able to anticipate when these actions are about to start happening because it seems like if the french didn't get involved it would have been really easy for those you know islamic extremists to just push right through and i mean we kind of saw it with afghanistan but if you don't have the appropriate training or like they're saying if you don't have the appropriate supply then things can get really bad really quickly, especially if you don't have the intel to sort of support and develop that quick enough to get the supply and planning going. Highly dispersed environment and fit the overall concept of operations, which calls for units conducting fast-paced independent maneuvers with limited sustainment support. As per French doctrine, these conditions call for a lean, highly mobile combined arms task force that can be committed in theater almost immediately. These forces will be drawn from many God units damn. based on who is that? and ready to go. Jesus. The formation that France will <laughs> use to meet this challenge is the Joint Tactical Group. Okay. What was that? Is that what they're talking about when they're talking about you know, being really quick and mobile. Or maybe that's where the lightning war aspect comes in, where you just got these dudes just yeeting their armored Go vehicles. Group. Or group mont tactique inter -arm. Roughly equivalent to a British battle group or Russian battalion tactical group, okay. French tactical groups are highly modular. Although so I'd French imagine that's maybe like a special purpose MAGTAF, like Marine Air Ground Task Force, or maybe kind of like a, a MU, but less you know, amphibious, I guess. <laughs> France does have permanent regiments, brigades, divisions, and so on. Since the 1990s, these echelons have mainly existed to generate tactical groups for overseas deployments. Tactical okay. groups deployed to the country would be generated from multiple brigades, and once in Mali itself would come under the ad hoc servo brigade. On Servo paper, okay. tactical groups are meant a lot to of consist of a command element, usually a regimental command and logistics company, three infantry and one armor company, or vice versa, okay. and support elements as needed, often including engineers and fire elements. Oh yeah. These assets then make up reinforced companies called subgroups or SGTIAs, which are the basic building block of French task forces. Hmm. They essentially look the same as the tactical groups, but at a company scale based on maneuver platoons. Yeah, it's kind of hard. Task force can look very, very different depending on what the purpose actually is, especially when you're talking about countries that are really familiar and you know they're, they're doing sort of UN missions a lot of the times, their task force are definitely going to look different than something like a Marine Air Ground Task Force, which, you know, same sort of mission, but not necessarily the same sort of scale all the time. So it looks very similar. It doesn't seem like it's too crazy different. But yeah, it seems like there's, it seems like they have a lot of sense as far as like the organization when they actually do develop these task force. So it seems like they're pretty well maintained. So I imagine that helps a lot when you're talking about getting the actual supply and logistics and everything sorted out when they're pushing out. Tactical groups, but at a company scale based on maneuver platoons. 
To reduce confusion, when we refer to specific SGTIAs, we'll be using the American terminology company team to describe them. France's first conventional okay. unit is airlifted bit. into the Malian capital within 24 hours. Just coming off nice. of a four-month deployment to Chad, this force will later fall under Tactical Group 1 as Company Team 1-1. Okay. It consists of an armored infantry company mounted in VAB APCs and the Reconnaissance and Support Ooh. Company from the 21st Marine Infantry Regiment, or REMA. REMA. Okay, nice. So it's always nice. I mean, mechanized infantry in this sort of terrain is always going to be way more beneficial. You can't really relate. It's like light infantry in this sort of terrain is not going to fare very well, especially against, you know, these, these sorts of tactics and whatnot. But it's always nice seeing all the different countries. <laughs> I like the, uh, the watermark there. It's always nice seeing all these different countries like armor personnel carriers because some look a little bit cooler than others. This one seems pretty simple. This looks a little bit unnerving. I mean, this dude just chilling. And I gotta, I gotta say, is there any room for the drivers if that dude is just chilling right there? That's kind of interesting. Forced by an ERC-90 armored what is that from the 1st Foreign Cavalry Regiment, French Foreign Legion. Oh, okay, the Foreign Legion. I wonder if the Foreign Legion gets like their own like kind of weird stuff because an armored car platoon, I've not seen that before, but it looks pretty cool. I mean, it'd be pretty intimidating if you don't have any sort of armor at all. <laughs> By 8 a.m. the next day, Company Team 1-2, consisting of an ERC-90 squadron from the 1st Parachute Hussar Regiment and hastily reinforced by an infantry platoon from the 3rd Marine Infantry Parachute Regiment flown mm. in from Gabon, set off on a road march from Côte d'Ivoire. They're accompanied by a combat engineer. <laughs> road march is different when you're looking at actual like mechanized forces though. <laughs> platoon from the 7th Parachute Engineer Regiment and the 3rd Marine Parachute Regiment's Command and Logistics Company, which will hmm. provide command and support for Tactical Group 1. Nice. Okay. The same day, a VAB company from the 2nd REMA stationed in France on Gepard Alert, which is France's reserve of emergency response forces, is airlifted into Mali. They will form the okay. basis of Damn. Company Team 1-3. When the road convoy reaches Mali on January 14th, the company teams recover and consolidate, bringing together mm. units that were previously in four different countries <laughs> That's... under unified control within three days. That's impressive. On January 15th, difficult. parts of the new Tactical Group 1 begin offensive operations. Company Team 1-1 with its 15 VAB Infantry Company and three ERC-90s nice. drive some 250 kilometers east of Bamako Airport Damn. to secure the bridge dam at Markala. That's how you know their maintenance and logistics was good because moving all that armor that distance with, I mean, I'm sure they had some hiccups, but that's pretty impressive, especially getting there on dawn of January 16th. Once there, yes, they take up blocking positions around the Niger River and relieve a contingent of French special forces in Marcala, nice. who then make their way north towards the town of Niona. Oh, snap. Three days later, farther to the northeast, the town of Kona is retaken by an air land force consisting of 400 Malian soldiers supported by a platoon-sized element of French special forces. Damn, a platoon of Meanwhile, special forces. The main French nice. force halts for three days, reinforcing their positions between Kona and Dia while mm. allowing logistics and command and control to be set up in the capital. As regional African troops begin to arrive in the country, the French are relieved in place by Burkinabi and Togolese troops and renew their offensive. Okay. On their deep drive into Damn, rebel this is territory, a, this is a crazy counterattack. One splits into two prongs. Infantry Company Teams 1-1 and 1-3 wing north, with their ultimate objectives being to secure the border with Mauritania and seize the town of Timbuktu. Armored Company mm. Team 1-2, meanwhile, continues northeastward towards Gao. Together, Locking Gao down that and river. Timbuktu account for 95% of North Mali's population. On January Damn, 21st, okay. the northern prong captures Diaboli, and the southern prong reaches the town of Duenza, which it's the Mali's captured. Again, it is really cool seeing like the sort of overlays, especially when you have like the, the color coding. I appreciate that. But it's kind of cool, especially when you see the days and seeing how quick everything is actually going. It's hard to get a good appreciation for what it actually must look like on the ground. I'm sure there is footage out there, but it is kind of nice just to get an overall representation using this map the same day. 
While Tactical Group 1 makes their initial gains, French High Command is making preparations to bring their forces to Brigade Strength. On January 21st, mm. the highly mechanized Tactical Group 2 sets sail from France. They're carried by the Duke okay. Mood, a Mr. Class amphibious assault ship, escorted by the corvette Lieutenant Duvay sous Louis Neff. Nice. It consists of two mechanized infantry companies from the 92nd Infantry Regiment mounted in VBCI infantry fighting. Oh, vehicles, hell yeah. Those look as a lot well cleaner. As a reconnaissance squadron from the 1st Rima with the mix of VBLs and VABs armed with 20mm auto cannons. Damn. A reduced artillery battery of four Caesar self propelled howitzers okay. from the 68th yeah, Artillery huh? Regiment and an engineer company from the 31st Engineers. Two days nice. later, airborne units on Gepard Alert from the 2nd Foreign Parachute Regiment and 17th Airborne Engineers are deployed to Côte d'Ivoire to stage for airborne operations. Hmm. On January oh, yeah. 25th, Company Team 1-2 recaptures Hambori along Route Nationale 16. Nice. The same day, Special Forces from the 1st Marine Parachute Regiment and Air Parachute Commando No. 10 capture the Wabaria Bridge crossing the Niger River, hmm. enabling Allied troops to move on the city of Gao. At 12.50 a.m. Nice. on the 26th, okay. Damn. Air Force... Co now, I'm sure the video is doing a really good job, but I gotta say, there's probably a lot of stuff happening simultaneously to get all this to go fluently. Like, you have special forces, all these different kinds of special forces as well, sort of affecting all these different areas while the main assault is still actually pushing up. And then you get, you know, all these other reinforcements going. You get the people staged for, air, you know, airborne assault. Now, I'm not too savvy on the whole French scheme of maneuver, but it seems like these guys are doing a really good job of using their time appropriately and putting people in the right spots to guarantee that they can push to a certain area at a certain time. It's pretty impressive. Mandos are inserted onto the runway of the Gao airfield via two Puma helicopters. They find the airport undefended, and before sunrise, nice. three C-160s and one C-130 conduct an air landing movement, Jeez. dropping off a They're company ready. team from the 1st Parachute Chasseur Regiment who take over security of the airport. Positions in Gao are further reinforced by Armored Company Team 1-2 and a large contingent of African troops to become the new center hmm. of Serval Brigade operations. Nice, Meanwhile, good stuff. the advance of the Northern Prong is progressing. In the lead up to the attack on Timbuktu, an infantry company consisting of 250 foreign legionnaires supported by a parachute commando platoon from the 2nd no Foreign kidding. Paratroopers conducts a night drop north of the city, That's cutting sick. off avenues of egress. Damn, when infantry got company teams 1-1 and 1-3 move in that day, they take the city with no resistance. Damn, yeah, of course. Simultaneously off in the east, special forces take the airfield at Kadal via a helicopter after assault deep in Tuareg country. Nice. The raid is carried out by a platoon-sized element of Air Force and Navy commandos, supported by two Tiger attack helicopters, Damn. a Gazelle, and four Puma transports. Hell yeah, the dude. The city itself is secured by 1,800 Chadian troops who arrive to stage for later operations in the Ifoga Mountains. Hmm. More paratroopers, special forces, and engineers are dropped onto Tesla That's Airport so cool to in me. the country's extreme north. I mean, I gotta say, the U.S. doesn't do many, you know, actual combat drops these days. So it's really cool to see other countries implementing their paratroopers like this because it's just, it's a really, really good asset. And this is like a perfect example of when you could use them. You know, dropping them off, cutting off certain areas, especially like egress routes. It's just, it's a really obvious and smart tactic but it's just cool to actually see it being implemented East, effectively boxing the islamists into the ifoga mountain region the airport is further secured by an element of paratroopers that are air landed in hmm. by mid-february the french african force begins its transition from fast-paced maneuver to a foot mobile slog through rugged terrain in a hot <laughs> climate Damn, the okay. new Tactical Group 3 arrives and relieves the original Tactical Group 1, who returned to France on February 17th. Well done. The new group includes one of TAC Group 1's VAB infantry companies from the 2nd Rima, another VAB company from the 126th Infantry Regiment, Damn. and two AMX-10 RC armored car squadrons, one from the 1st Rima and another from the Marine Infantry Tank Regiment. That's crazy. Is it? I wonder if it's normal for like all these different units to come together. I mean, it is kind of hard to understand. I know like in the Army, there's units all over the place. You'll have a bunch of different 
infantry battalions from different infantry regiments under the same brigade. And that's kind of just normal now. In the Marine Corps, it's a little bit easier to understand, but I wonder if it's normal for the French military to get all these different people and put them under. I mean, it is like, you know, a task force, so it makes a lot of sense, which just goes to show that the logistics are pretty on point if you're getting all these different units working together, maybe for the first time, or maybe the first time in a while, and then everything is still going really, really smoothly. They're supported by an engineer company, two reduced batteries from the 11th Marine Artillery Regiment, one of which has two Caesar self-propelled howitzers, while the other has four 120 millimeter mortars. Further, okay. after a long drive from nice the port in Senegal, TAC Group 2 arrives in the Malian capital on February 12th. With these forces in country, the next phase of the operation is to assault Ansardine and Al-Qaeda holdouts in the Ifoga Mountains. Hmm. The mechanized Tactical Group 3 will attack from the west, while the airborne Tactical Group 4 will Hell attack yeah. from the north. The latter, after regrouping, consists of four airborne infantry companies, an airborne engineer platoon, tactical air controllers, yeah. and a commando platoon. <laughs> nice. This force will be supported that by to several work, then. helicopters contained within the Servo Brigade's Air Mobile Group. Meanwhile, 800 Chadian troops will attack from the east. All the while, Damn. the freshly arrived Tactical Group 2 will remain in the south, taking on counterinsurgency operations against yep. Mujao holdouts in the vicinity of Gao. The Good battle, idea. under the codename Operation Panther, commences on February 18th and lasts until March 31st. I gotta say, I do love, that's a cool time to pause. I do love these like clips that they're throwing in here. It's just giving us a good feel for, you know, what the actual units look like, what the equipment look like, what the actual conditions look like as well. I don't know, it just really adds to it. So I think it's very well done. Resulting in a French Chadian victory that significantly decreases the Islamists' look at that. conventional look at those means rocks. of waging war. After the battle's conclusion, groups three and four move south, joining group two in stability operations in the Gao Kidal region. As the French mm. shift from high to low intensity operations, all three of its tactical groups are relieved on May 11th by one tactical group, That's insane. GTIA Just like that. Desert. It's like four Operation months. Operation Serval officially came to an end on July 15th, transitioning into the counterinsurgency focused Operation Barkhan. Hmm. Overall, Operation Serval showcased the flexible expeditionary character of the French army through its ability to rapidly pull together mixed task forces and bring about impressive. Hold on, what the heck was that thing? <laughs> Sorry. Of the French Th that's army. That's cool, through but its what? Ability to rapidly what is this? Is this like a. It looks like a helicopter, but it looks like it's got a. Pull together. I have no idea. If you guys could help identify what this is, it looks like a UFO right now. Mixed task forces <laughs> and bring about impressive effects on the ground. But it was also indicative of a doctrine that was validated during colonial action during the Cold War and continues mm. to be primarily used in post-colonial asymmetric conflicts against technologically inferior foes. The case acknowledged the shortcomings of the French army in terms of what kind of force it could support. Hmm. As case in point, the whole brigade only had six howitzers and four 120 millimeter mortars as artillery support. Yeah. But at the same time, French units kept on the move almost constantly, with the commander of Tactical Group 3 bragging that he stayed in contact with the enemy for six weeks straight with no pause <laughs> for maintenance, all the while climbing nice. up to 5,000 kilometers. Jeez. Broadly speaking, sustainment measures like stopping to maintain vehicles were kept at an absolute minimum in order to maintain momentum. The primary really? sustainment priorities were food, fuel, and water. It, it went should pretty be well then. The entire French force was mounted on wheeled platforms, which have lower maintenance and sustainment requirements compared to tracked vehicles. Hmm. Although the operation okay. turned out Makes to be sense. strategically that, inconclusive, as North Mali is still at war, the operational victory brought about by Operation Serval is undeniable. But this was a big picture look. Nice. If you'd like to see how France organizes its infantry at the lowest tactical levels, check out this video on the newest organization and weapons yes, of the sir. French infantry squad. Yep, we saw some really interesting stuff in that video, which I did a reaction to. Again, battle order, some really, really fantastic stuff. So this was a really, really well done video. I gotta say, I'm really impressed with the research for one is, is really spot on. But again, adding the clips, adding the imagery, having the correct like military symbols is kind of just like an extra plus from me. So yeah, it's just 
really, really good stuff. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed learning about this. It's nice to get a little bit of background. I didn't know that. I mean, I would have expected Molly to be like, you know, uh, something like the global war on terror. And it seems like as far as the actual offensive, that was pretty freaking quick. Of course, the counterinsurgency is going to be, uh, you know, a bit of a struggle and that's going to be an understatement. But as far as the offensive, that was really impressive to see. And again, I just, it's kind of cool. You get like a newfound respect. I mean, it's not necessarily like prior disrespect, but you definitely get a newfound respect for different militaries and organizations when you can see something like this. But of course, if you guys have anything to add as far as your own personal experiences actually serving in this operation or supporting operations, let me know down in the comment section because it's just, it's interesting to hear about from the actual firsthand account as far as how everything went because you can hear things as far as, you know, how people are reporting on it or videos like this, but the people on the ground really get to see how things were. And it's kind of interesting to hear about that. So of course, if you guys have any personal experiences, throw them down below because we would all love to hear that. Or if you want to go down into Discord, you can share that stuff there as well. But thank you guys for watching. Thank you for the awesome recommendation. This was a really, really solid one. So of course, I'll put the original video in the description so you guys can go check it out and check out Battle Order because they do some fantastic stuff. But thank you guys for watching. That's it for this video. I'll see you on the next one.